Well, God bless you. Listen, I'm so delighted again to be able to just share just a word with you. I'm so excited about what is getting ready to take place on these grounds here at the Salem Church. Uh, our conference that will take place, new anointing conference that will take place July the 4th through the 7th. That's right, the 4th through the 7th, and it is power packed from beginning to end. Listen, I'm telling you in advance so you can make provision, make your flight arrangement, your hotel accommodations, and all those things because you want to be here for this wonderful, exciting event that will take place here at this wonderful conference. This is our 13th year of this conference. Listen, we're starting off with a bang on the 4th of July. Bishop Al Green, do you believe it? Bishop Al Green will be here along with uh, Pastor Donald Parson. That's enough within itself. You, you need to make reservations to be here. Tuesday night, Pastor Billy Bell will be here. My goodness, just Dr. Bell alone. And then Dr. Maurice Watson will be here on Tuesday night. Wednesday, Pastor Jamal Bryant will be here. Wow. And then Thursday, we're celebrating a living legend in our city, Dr. J.L. Payne. He is the godfather of the pastors and preachers in our city. We love him so much here in the city of Memphis. He has meant so much to the body of Christ, to the people of God. And we want to show him some love on that Thursday. Uh, our, our living luncheon will be Thursday. Uh, John Howard Wesley. Uh, will be here on Thursday night to preach in our Gospel Explosion. H.B. Charles will be here to preach in that explosion. And then John Terrius Tate, uh, one of the sons in the city, will be here to preach on that Thursday night. Of course, during the day, we have just a wonderful preacher, the one that had been here, John Adolph, will be back again by popular demand and preach every day in our noon service. And then all of our classes, all of our lecturers that will take place during the course of the week, you got to be here. You need to make provision right now to come. You can register online right now if you like. Just go to godisgoodministry.net and register. Of course, you can call our church office at 1-800-375-4007. Plan to be here. Listen, they might just get a discount if you come in groups. Call our office and we'll give you the details. Have a wonderful day. You be blessed. Well, God bless you. I am so honored and certainly delighted to have this wonderful privilege of being able to share with you the Word of God. Many times we count ourselves out. We live defeated lives merely because of what others have said to us. That those is always trying to make you believe and think that you will never be victorious. But we're not just victorious. We're conquerors. We're not just conquerors. We're more than conquerors. I want to carry you in and let you listen to a message that God allowed us to share not very long ago, entitled More Than Conquerors. You'll enjoy this. Let's listen. Because when Satan discover and find out that you have surrendered to God, he launched his greatest attack on you. And he do everything he can to try to damn your soul. And so we have to ask ourselves and have to come to conclusion that this is not a playground, it's a battleground. It's not a place where we play and lay and joke and jest and cuss and fuss and whine and dine. It's a time for us to make sure that our house is in order. And if it is in order, am I positioning myself so that come hell or high water, nothing will be able to take me out. Are you interested? I wanted to take a little while and walk through the text and allow the text to tailor the truth to help us understand as to where we are and who we are and whose we are. Romans is this unique book that give us so many holy helpful hints 
to help us be secure in our salvation and our commitment to the Lord. In Romans chapter 8, he began by saying, there is no condemnation. And he closes it in verse 39 where it said, there is no separation. No condemnation at the beginning of the verse, no separation at the end of the verse. And I wanted to see, since there is no condemnation, since I cannot be lost, and there is no separation, which means I cannot be divorced from God, I wanted to know how did he do it? And what did he do to get me to be so secure in him, and if I can bless somebody else, that may be a little shaky with your salvation to know that all is well. If you notice, he says in Romans 8, 29, he said, for whom he did foreknow, progenosco in the Greek, pra mean pry, which mean pry to us being here, God already knew it. <laughs> in other words, everything about us, God knew it before you ever arrived. God didn't just acquaint, get acquainted with you when you walked down the aisle and gave the preacher your hand. God knew you before you was born. Before the X chromosome and the Y chromosome and the new you yet to be take on its union, God already knew you. Matter of fact, God had already sanctified you before you got here. <laughs> That's what he said in Jeremiah 1 and 5. He says to Jeremiah, before your mother formed you in, your, in her belly, he said, I knew you. I sanctified you. He said, I set you aside. I gave you a position even before you got here. And I should say to us that God did that for us. He foreknew us. And then it said, for whom he did foreknow, then he also did predestinate, prusio in the Greek, which means he marks off a boundary. Meaning this, that according to Psalms, Psalms 37, verse 23, he said, The steps of a good man, they are ordered by the Lord. That means God, he, he orders my path. In other words, he decides which route I should take. He order my path, but he also order my pause. Because sometimes in life, it looked like I'm not prospering like I should, but God put a pause in our lives. Sometimes to get us more equipped so we can handle whatever God would have us to handle. And then not only does he order my path, order my, talk to me somebody, my pauses, he order my pitfalls. In other words, when I stumble into something, it is no surprise to God because many times when we get to the place where we don't pray like we ought to, he let us stumble in the stuff. When we get to the place where we don't go to church no more and talk to him if you can, we don't do what we ought to do, he let us stumble in the stuff. And if nobody else can get you to show up at prayer meetings, God can. God can order a prayer meeting whenever God get ready. Have I got any help in here? He order not only my, not only does he order my path, my pitfall, my pauses, talk to me somebody. He has a purpose for me in mind. Because God has already designed where I need to be. He says in Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are the call according to his purpose. God has a purpose with your name on it. But not only does he order your path, your purpose, talk to him as somebody, your pitfall, he order your posse. I'll be down the road in a moment. In other words, God select certain people he can match up with you to get you from point A to point B. And everybody he put in your path and not somebody that appreciates you. Sometimes God put people as your posse to just irritate the living daylights out of you. He put people in your path as part of posse that get on your last nerve 
because these are the folk that help you be who and what you ought to be. Talk to me, somebody. I don't have y'all do a lot of shaking hands, but shake somebody's hand and say, honey, you in the posse. God puts you in a posse so he can get you where God would have you to be. Do I have a witness? I watch the text. He says, he asks for impossible questions. Here they are in verse 32. He that spared, verse 31. What then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? That's one, one impossibility. That means. If you got God with you, who is it that's strong enough to come against God? I wish you had some help in that. Sometimes you don't know who you are. And sometimes you don't know whose you are. We walk around looking over our shoulders. If though we think we have to fight our own battle, if though we think we have to defend ourselves, he said one possibility, if God is for you, preach from me, who can be against you? You around here spending restless nights, can't sleep at night, worrying about what's gonna happen, ask yourself, am I in God's hands? If you're in God's hand, there's no pit deep enough to keep you from getting out of it. If you're in God's hand, there's no sickness severe enough to take you out of here. Talk to me, somebody. When you're in God's hand, first question is, makes your God as false. Well, you're gonna take my word back up again. Verse 30. Romans chapter 8, moreover, whom he did predestinate, then he also called. It means you're part of the call family. The word call is the Greek word kaleo. It means you have been called out of darkness into the marvelous light. Greek word for church, you're part of the church, is ekklesia. Ek means ex exit. It meant when the Lord saved you, he exited you out of something. Well, God bless you. I'm going to pause just for a moment. I'll get you right back to this message momentarily. But isn't it wonderful to know the investment God has invested in us? He asks us pregnant questions. If God be for us, who can be against us? Who can lay anything to God's elect? He that spared not his son, don't you know that he will not spare you anything that will be for your good? My goodness. And then above and beyond, to know that we can be victorious and live victorious lives, knowing who he is, what he has invested in us. 2 Corinthians 4 and 7 said, we have this treasure in an earthen vessel. What a powerful message this is. Listen, I preach this sermon to encourage me. I know it will encourage you. I'm gonna go back and let's conclude this message entitled more. That's right, than a conqueror. Let's listen. None of us in here can smile and look down at other folk because we used to be there. If you're saved now, you're an ex son ex-pimp, ex-prostitute, ex-dope addict, ex-dope pusher, ex-homonger, ex-ho, talk to me somebody, you an ex-something, but thank God, God delivered you. We have exited out of something, the word kaleo means call, we were exited out, but call in. And since we were called in, 
God called us in to prepare us to send us back out to be the light of the world. He said, you don't mind if I teach, do you? He said, moreover whom he did predestinate, them he also called, whom he called, them he also justified. Justified mean this. It mean when God look at my sins now, he can't see them. Because what Jesus did was he took his robe off and he took my robe off. He put his robe of righteousness on me. He took my robe of sin and put on him. So when God look at me, he cannot see my sins through the blood of Jesus. I came in here to preach y'all. So I ain't got to walk around with a hung down head and talk about I know I messed up. He knew I messed up before he saved me. And yet he wrapped me up with his blood. He took red blood, put it on a black heart, and washed it whiter than snow. Somebody asked him the question, what can wash away my sins? Answer, shout back, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? The answer come back, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Somebody in the audience said, since it took so much blood to wash away your sins, is there any blood left? The songwriter said, there is a fountain filled with blood. Drawn from Emmanuel's vein, sinners plunge beneath our flood. Lose all thy guilt and stain. He said, whom he did for no, he also called. Them whom he called, them he also justified. And them whom he justified, he say also glorified. And I should let you know that if you've been called, if you've been justified, if you've been glorified, you don't have to wonder if he's with you. Because when these things happen, you're automatically a part of the family. So you ought to be able to say to yourself, I see now that I'm part of the family of God. So that means he is with me. Question number one, who can be against us? The answer is, Nobody. Question number two is in verse 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Question number two is, if God didn't spare his son, but he gave his son up to die for the greater thing, Will he not also give us lesser things? In other words, if God saved my soul, surely he'll heal my body. <laughs> Do I have a witness? If somebody gave me a brand new car, then surely they'll give me a spare. I ought to have some hip in this house. He said, listen, if God, you walk around talking about how am I going to get a job? Is God going to open the door for you? Don't you know God loved you so much until he gave his whole life? It wasn't the enemies that kept him on the cross. Certainly it wasn't the nails. It was his love. Help me say it was his love. With the nails, he could have removed from the layer of nails whenever he got wanted, got wanted or wanted to. He stayed there because it was his love. Question number two, will he freely? I like it because that means you don't have to beg God for nothing. God want to give you the best of life. Not only does he want to give it to you, he want to give it to you freely. Shout freely. Well, here's the third question. Who shall lay anything 
to the charge of God's elect. He carries us into the courtroom. He said, I know they're private investigators. He said, I know there are people that's looking around, trying to find fault against me. He said, I know they're trying to chop up evidence to try to take me out. He said, but who says Jesus is your attorney? And God is the judge on the bench. And since you belong to God, and since Jesus is your brother, who is it that can lay in a charge against you? Now I'm really preaching better than y'all saying amen. Never got a witness here. He said, I don't care what they say about you. He said, you got Jesus as your defense attorney. Anybody here know that Jesus and God, they're working on the same team. <laughs> I like that because when you got a good attorney and your attorney know the judge, a lot of times your case is handled out of court. That you sit there and you're scared to death. And you see your attorney talk to the judge. And why your attorney begged for you to come out of the courtroom. You come out and say, man, what's going on? He said, it's over. He said, what you mean is over? Your case was handled out of court. Tell the truth so y'all can understand it. Jesus is your attorney and your judge. In other words, he sits on the bench as your judge. But then go down to talk to me, somebody, on the floor as your attorney. He said, the judge said, are there any evidence against this man? The attorney said, your honor, there's nothing wrong with the man. He said, but the judge said, well, why did you bring him here? The prosecuting attorney said he's guilty. The attorney said, but your honor, that debt has already been paid. I wish I had some help in this house. Six of my hand said, your debt has already been paid. Well, God bless you. Listen, we're out of time, but certainly not out of message. I appreciate the writings of the Apostle Paul so much because he is such an encourager to encourage us, to help us go on a little longer, to last a little longer, to walk a little harder, to try a little harder, to do those things that will be pleasing in the sight of God. I know you would like to get a copy of this message so you can keep that it is a keepsake that you would like to share it with your family and friends, that person that's despondent, the person that's feeling weak, weary, wounded, and without strength. Need to listen to this message again and again. Get your pencil and pad and piece of paper and sit down and walk through the text as the Lord allowed me to share the message with you. You can get this message, of course, by just dialing 1-800-375-4007 a right to God is good ministry 2237 South Parkway East Memphis Tennessee a go to God is good ministry dot net and of course you can order this message and many other it would be such a blessing to you and for you and of course if you're ever in and around the city of Memphis we'd love for you to come and worship with us on Sunday morning we look forward to having you in this place make sure that when you come to the city of Memphis Stop by the Salem Church, some of the greatest people on the planet you will find worshiping at this place. Again, let me say to you, thank you so much for sharing with us and sharing the word of God. Can I have a word of prayer with you if I can? Gracious God, our Father, I thank you so much. Again, for the viewers, for the person that's viewing this telecast, we pray for those that need you the most, the person that's going through, even as I talk to you now. I would that you would bless them in a mighty and marvelous way in the wonderful and powerful name of Jesus. We pray and give you the praises forever. Amen. And thank God. Be blessed, my beloved. And remember, God is good. You got it all the time.
Well, God bless you. Listen, I'm so delighted again to be able to just share just a word with you. I'm so excited about what is getting ready to take place on these grounds here at the Salem Church. Uh, our conference that will take place, new anointing conference that will take place July the 4th through the 7th. That's right, the 4th through the 7th, and it is power packed from beginning to end. Listen, I'm telling you in advance so you can make provisions, make your flight arrangement, your hotel accommodations, and all those things because you want to be here for this wonderful, exciting event that will take place here at this wonderful conference. This is our 13th year of this conference. Listen, we're starting it off with a bang on the 4th of July. Bishop Al Green, do you believe it? Bishop Al Green will be here along with uh, Pastor Donald Parson. That's enough within itself. You, you need to make reservations to be here. Tuesday night, Pastor Billy Bell will be here. My goodness, just Dr. Bell alone. And then Dr. Maurice Watson will be here on Tuesday night. Wednesday, Pastor Jamal Bryant will be here. Wow. And then Thursday, we're celebrating a living legend in our city, Dr. J.L. Payne. He is the godfather of the pastors and preachers in our city. We love him so much here in the city of Memphis. He has meant so much to the body of Christ, to the people of God. And we want to show him some love on that Thursday. Uh, our, our living luncheon will be Thursday. Uh, John Howard Wesley uh, will be here on Thursday night to preach in our gospel explosion. H.B. Charles will be here to preach in that explosion. And then John Terrius Tate, uh, one of the sons in the city, will be here to preach on that Thursday night. Of course, during the day, we have just a wonderful preacher, the one that had been here, John Adolph, will be back again by Papa the Man and preach every day in our noon service. And then all of our classes, all of our lecturers that will take place during the course of the week, you got to be here. You need to make provision right now to come. You can register online right now if you like. Just go to godisgoodministry.net and register. Of course, you can call our church office at 1-800-375-4007. Plan to be here. Listen, they might just get a discount if you come in groups. Call our office and we'll give you the details. Have a wonderful day. You be blessed.